Hey, hey everyone, this is Nate, and we have now done all of the unboxing videos, and we're ready to conclude with our final unboxing video, the Seraph versus Vampire Lord. And since it's the day before Halloween, I have worn my beautiful Vampire Lord shirt. Uh, but let's open this box up and see what we got. So we'll start with the Seraph here. And I still never get tired of these beautiful trifold hero boards. I love it. Uh, beautiful, beautiful board. I guess let's talk about her uh, status effects and then we can start explaining what they do on her board. So here's her status effects. Uh, we'll go through each of them. So flight, uh, you roll two dice and then a player with this token may spend it at any time during the roll phase. Once spent, roll two dice. If a six was rolled, activate this token. If activated during the offensive roll phase, this player's attack becomes undefendable. If activated during the defensive roll phase, ignore all incoming damage. So it's really great that you get to choose how you want to use this token, either offensively or defensively. Blinding Light, the next time a player afflicted with this token concludes their offensive roll phase, they must remove this token and roll one die. On a one, their offensive roll phase has no effect of any kind. On a two to three, any damage they deal for the remainder of the roll phase is reduced by half. And of course, any other number does nothing. Cleanse, you guys are all familiar with from the Monk. Now, Holy Presence, this one's real fun. During their upkeep phase, a player with this token deals one damage to all opponents. So you basically take, it, if I'm the Seraph and I have Holy Presence and it stacks up to two, I could have two of them. If I have two, then all of my opponents take two damage every time I begin my turn just for standing in my Holy Presence. That's always fun to say when you're the Seraph. Uh, now this token, this is important, this token may not be transferred by any means, but it can be removed. Now Blessing of Divinity, you guys have seen it on the Paladin, however, there are, it's, of course, it's a beautiful new die cut token. And to support that, if we look at her tray here, uh, one of the things that we did, of course, hidden underneath these two dials, you can have more room for tokens. And we included two of these, which is impossible for to ever need in a game, but we included two so that if you want to replace your Paladin's token, you certainly can with that other one there. Uh, let's see, what else? So here's her some of her cards. They came out really good. Uh, and her dice. Now these are the uh, Deluxe Edition, the Champion Edition dice. So you can see the nice marbling effect here. It's real subtle intentionally, uh, but it came out great. And her dice distribution, um, she has, uh, she's what we call a three, one, one, one. So she has all three of one symbol and then three different, kind of like the Pyromancer does. And now let's take a couple quick abilities we'll glance at here that are unique. So Purify says, first you choose a player. If that player is an opponent, then they get five undefendable damage. Otherwise that player will heal four. Additionally, may remove a status effect from that player. So if the Shadow Thief, for example, goes into the shadows, this is a perfect move to hit. You get to pop him out of the shadows and do five damage to him. Uh, also worthy of note, split the heavens. You gain flight, holy presence, and blessing of divinity, and then deal 13 damage. Devastating move to do there. All right, let's look at the Vampire Lord. Oh, still love that. So she is what we'd call a blood mage in our world. Uh, no, we are not Satanists at all. This is a game, so don't get over that. Uh, let's look at some of her tokens. So actually, we'll start from the bottom up. Bleed is also on the Huntress. Uh, you, a player afflicted with this token must roll one die during their upkeep phase. On a one to four, they are dealt one damage. On five to six, you get to remove this token. So it's kind of like a soft poison, uh, but you can stop the bleeding if you roll a five and a six. Mesmerize. A player with this token may spend it and roll one die. On a five to six, you may force the opponent to re-roll any one die. So it becomes a free helping hand if you can hit that five to six. Stack limit one and stack limit two on the bleed. Now blood power, this is where she gets most interesting. Uh, a player with these tokens may spend them to activate each effect once per turn. If you spend one token, if your offensive roll phase results in attack, you can add two damage. This counts as an attack modifier, which means you must be dealing at least one in order to do that. Two tokens, you may remove one status effect from yourself. Three tokens, you get to draw two cards, then discard any card from your hand. It doesn't have to be those two. And four tokens, here's the money one. Heal equal to the amount of damage that you successfully dealt this roll phase. So she spends a lot of time trying to set up this ultimate combo. It's very difficult to get to four, to four blood tokens 
uh, you stack them to four, but to get there and use it properly. The opponent has to not defend well. Uh, if you are the opponent, try and save your not this time cards or other things to surprise your opponent. And uh, or if you have an instant evade or something like that, um, to not take that damage. Otherwise, if she pulls it off successfully, it can be a massive swing in the game. And that's balanced, of course, because her defense, otherwise, frankly, is not that great. Uh, you get to roll three dice, and on two claws, you get to inflict bleed. On two gazes, you get to gain one blood power, and you steal one health per uh, droplet rolled. So it's not that great, but it gets way stronger uh, using her massive combo. Uh, now her ultimate, you guys are gonna like this, it says, search your deck for any one card and then put it into your hand and shuffle your deck. It's amazing. Uh, gain two blood power and then deal 10 damage. So of course the damage output is not that great. However, if you combo it, you get two blood power here. So if you pull off your big combo and you can heal that amount, it can be devastating. Additionally, if you, let's say, hit it without using your twice as wild and then I get to search my deck to draw that twice as wild, that can be incredibly, incredibly strong. Yeah, I realized I forgot to show you her amazing dice. Uh, and these are, of course, the Kickstarter dice. And I don't know if you can see that very subtle black marbling, but it came, it's absolutely stunning. I was really, really, really pleased. They might be some of my favorite dice in the season two. And then uh, her dials. Of course, we have her combat dial. We have her health dial. Um, those both came out really well. I love her face ominous and her eyes right at the top there. And then lastly, her cards. We'll show you a few of these. Um, uh, so that's about it for her. She's not the strongest in general, like Glamour, for example, gain one combat point, gain Mesmerize, uh, deal four undefendable damage. She has lots of seemingly okay, not that great attacks, uh, which is why she's a little bit of a higher complexity rating. Um, she's a complexity four in order to play, and it's mainly because of her combo. If you're playing against her, your goal is to make sure she does not get to pull off that epic combo. The Seraph is a complexity three, uh, and that's mainly because you have to know, uh, there's a few things to prioritize. One is do you use flight for offense or defense, and two is trying to get Holy Presence as soon as you can is a very smart tactic. Uh, that's it for tonight, guys. Thank you so much for uh, joining us and for the final unboxing video. It's not too late to tell your friends to pre-order at DiceRoom.com. Take care.